Okay, so this video is going to show what happens how a, a profit take, a profit maximizing price taking firm responds to a change in the wage of labor. This would really be, if you want to think about it, this would be how you would, you would derive the uh, factor demand curve for a, a, a firm. So if you if you wanted to derive the, the uh, demand for labor that a, a firm would have. We would go through this type of an exercise to uh, show several different uh, changes or several different wages and how much labor the firm would want to uh, hire at those different levels. We could then take that information and that would, in effect, on a supply and demand curve for labor, that would be this firm's labor demand curve. And you would be summing up those uh, labor demand curves for each of the firms in the labor market and uh, then we could do supply and demand in the labor market. So uh, this is in effect what we would be doing to uh, show the construction of the uh, factor demand, similar to what we did back in, in chapters, uh, chapter three, where we looked at the derivation of the uh, consumer's demand good for demand curve for say uh, bananas, for one of the goods, good X. So, um, we'll need to have two diagrams here. The first one is going to be an ISO cost, ISO quant diagram. And I've got it drawn up here with an initial price of, of labor that I've labeled uh, W1. We're going to look at an increase in, in the uh, wage of labor. But initially at the wage of labor, the W1, uh, we have a ISO, we take the uh, ISO quant, and we take the ISO quant Q1, which is the uh, quantity the firm wants to produce, and we would get this off of this would in effect be the uh, of firm says the firm diagram from the model of perfect competition. We have marginal cost in here. We also have average cost, but didn't then draw that in here. We have marginal cost, and then the uh, the firm is a price taker, and we have the horizontal marginal revenue curve, and then that gives us the uh, quantity that the firm would want to produce. So this profit maximizing firm wants to produce Q1. We come over to the ISO cost ISO quant diagram. We've drawn that quantity in here, and then given the uh, slope of these ISO cost lines, uh, we've found the ISO cost that's tangent to the Q1 ISO quant. It's tangent here at this point, and at that point, the firm would want to produce to, to maximize profit, in, or to minimize their cost in producing Q1 units of output. They want to hire L1 units of labor and K1 units of capital. So now we're going to look at well, well what happens when the um, wage of labor goes up. And what we're going to see, there's going to be two parts to this. So just as in, uh, in chapter three, when we were looking at demand, after we showed how to construct the uh, consumer's demand curve, we uh, decomposed that change in demand or that, that the change in, uh, in response to a price into what are known as the income and substitution effects. There's going to be two uh, components here as well. So the first thing we have to do is draw a new ISO cost representing a higher uh, wage of labor. So the slope of the ISO cost is uh, wage divided by the, uh, the price of capital. So as the uh, wage of labor goes up, the ISO cost will become steeper. So we have a steeper ISO cost, and we're going to find the uh, one that would be tangent to Q1. So that would be okay, up here. So that's W2 over V, that's giving us the slope of this ISO uh, cost line. And I'll just note up here, W2 is greater than W1. So we're looking at a, an increase in the wage of, of labor. This is the same thing that I have in uh, my notes for this, for chapter 13 that I posted. So this firm would, if they're going, if they were going to continue to produce Q1 units of the good, they would shift from producing it using L1 and K1 to using a combination of labor and capital that we don't care So the wage of labor goes up, so probably not surprisingly, the firm would use less uh, labor and more capital. They would substitute capital for labor in the production of a given amount of output. Now, in my notes, I go through to show this, but it, it turns out that the cost of producing Q1 units of, of output has gone up. 
due to this increase in the wage of labor. You might think that that would be, that would be straightforward, but then you start to think like, well, but you're substituting capital for labor, and so as you substitute that, you know, you're using relatively cheaper capital, could this end up lowering the cost of, um, the cost of producing Q1? And the answer is no, it can't. The cost will go up. Um, and most importantly, if we, can, if we think about it then, if the cost is going to go up, the marginal cost will likely rise. So if we come over, so the issue would be because the marginal cost has gone up, the firm is no longer going to want to continue to produce Q1 units of output. So they would use, they would demand L2 units of labor to produce uh, output at, at W2, but the, the problem here is that they no longer want to produce a unit or a Q, Q1 units of output. The wage of labor has gone up, so costs have gone up. So marginal costs will have increased, and that means if we've got our, our MC1 drawn here, we have to draw in a new marginal cost curve. I will label MC2, and that represents the increase in cost of production. Well, MC2 is going to intersect uh, MR, which is what we need to have for profit maximization, at a lower quantity. So because costs are higher, this firm is going to want to produce less output, or it can end up producing less output uh, in order to maximize profit. So what we've drawn here on the ISO cost, ISO quant diagram isn't quite correct. It's not complete. But I said it's not incorrect, but it's not complete. It's not the whole story. Uh, we just show the effect of changing the relative price of labor, of making uh, the wage more expensive and holding the uh, price of capital constant. But the firm, because their costs have gone up, will want to produce less output as well. So what we have to do is come over to this diagram and draw a second isoquant in uh, for Q2. And the important thing is, as we see from over here, Q2 is smaller than Q1. So we wouldn't have an iso. Uh, quant diagram that's down here, and I'm going to draw it with a little bit of a larger shift here, just so we don't uh, end up with two curves in the exact same place here. And we've already shifted the, uh, we've already changed the wage of labor. So the uh, slope of the ISO cost is W2 over V. So if we're going to have an ISO, we need to have an ISO cost that's parallel to this one, but tangent to the Q2 ISO quant. So we need to draw in uh, parallel and uh, tangent. So we'll try to do something like this looks like it might be right. And I'll, I'll use those. Uh, slash marks to represent uh, uh, parallel lines we have here. And so because the firm now wants to produce Q2 units of output instead of Q1 units of output, we have a new tangency point that would be here. And I'll, I'll label that L3. Uh, it looks like from that tangency point, I might, I, I might have drawn this so I lined up with Q, K1 is the, uh, the amount of uh, out capital they want to produce. If that is, that's just an accident. That just happened to be how I drew it there. There's not, that wouldn't have to necessarily be the case. The amount of capital you can use can be a little bit higher or, or lower than it was uh, originally. What we can see here, no, so. L3 is actually going to give us now the uh, full effect. If we were to construct a uh, demand curve for labor, well, what we would know is that W1, the firm wants to hire L1 units of labor. So that would be like a point on, on the uh, firm's uh, demand for labor schedule. And then at W2, this firm wants to actually hire L3 units of labor. So that would be a, the next point. Those would be the two points we would graph, and we'd get a labor demand curve in that fashion. What we've actually done here is illustrate uh, or decompose the two components of the uh, firm's response to the, the change in the wage of labor. The first response here that we have, if we label these points, going from point A, the tangency point with uh, W1 with Q1 on, on the Q1 ISO quant, to point B, showing just the effect of, of increasing the wage, 
going from A to B would be what we would call the substitution effect. And that's just saying, for producing a given quantity of output, how does the firm respond? Well, if technology allows it all, which is where we've got from the shape of this uh, isoquant, that there is some substitutability of, of uh, capital for labor. If labor is more expensive, you substitute the uh, capital for labor. And so it going from A to B would be the substitution effect. And then if we label this point here for or this point on isoquant Q2, that's uh, tangent to W2 over B. If we label that point C, then we'd say that B to C is what's known as the output effect. Uh, is this the output effect would parallel what we called previously the income effect when we look at consumer demand. But there are two components to the uh, the change in the, the 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 firm's response to a change in the price of an input. There's a substitution effect, and then there is an, an output effect. And so then the total effect of the change in, in uh, the, the change in labor usage would be A to C. And we've just decomposed it into these two parts. So this is how a firm would respond to a change in the wage of, of labor. 